Today we're going over all of our router bits and exactly how we use them. We get a ton of questions about what router bits we use for what purposes. So that's what we're going over today. Now, something to keep in mind is this is how dad and I use them. Grandpa, for instance, he would use the profile for the inset. We don't do that. So it's all kind of open to interpretations. There's definitely better bits for better purposes, but if you only have one or two, you can make it work. So I'll put links in the description below for all the bits we use today, and that will take you right over to our website. So guys, we do not have paid sponsors. Our business is funded strictly by selling router bits, base plates, and all the supplies you need to carve signs. So head on over to makeawoodsign.com and see if there's anything you need, and if you got any questions, you can shoot us an email. First on the list is the profile bit. Now the profile bit is by far the most versatile bit that we have. We can do so many different things with it. But the main thing that we do with it is outset letters. That's where you have a letter, but rather than carving the letter away, you're going around the outside of the letter, and then you're gonna use a different bit to cut a background. Next, we use it for small inset letters or small artwork. So it might be small inset letters that you can't fit your 60 degree uh, router bit in, or it might be large inset letters if you like the way that looks. We use 60 degree for a lot of inset letters, but you can absolutely use the profile bit for inset letters as well. It just takes a little bit longer, it cuts a little narrower, and you might have to double cut on both sides of the inside of your inset carving, rather than with a 60, you might get it all done in one pass. So along that same line, if you've got artwork that's fairly good size, you might silhouette the inside of that artwork if you want to carve it inset. Then you can go back with a different bit to carve everything that's left over inside. One of the great things about the profile bit is it is double fluted and you can take that thing at a quarter of an inch or even deeper if you want to and you don't have to worry about the fact that it might break or chip. So as a side note, most of the bits that you get from us, we can sharpen. There's only a couple and we'll get into those that we can't sharpen, but profile is definitely one we can our quarter inch 90 degree bit. Now you can use this for a few different purposes. The main purpose we use it for is to do our background around outset letters or even outset artwork. We use this because we really like the textured look. I think dad's mentioned that before. We like to have kind of a rough texture. If you like a flat background, that's a different bit. But this 90 degree bit, you can do all sorts of different textures depending on how you move the router. For our standard background, which is kind of that rough hills and valleys, we just go in small circles. But you can do vertical lines, horizontal lines, diagonal, you can do checkered. You can do a ton of stuff with this bit. Another way you can use it is if you have large inset letters. So like, let's say three to four inch inset letters, you can use the 90 degree bit to carve all your lines instead of the profile bit because it'll cut your time down pretty good and also it'll still give you a really solid line to follow. Then you just go back in and remove the rest of the wood with the same bit. Another way you can use it is if you have a piece of artwork that's just not super intricate, say like just our bear and you wanted to carve it out set. Well, you can use the 90 degree bit once it's all carved and give it a bolder line, that way it stands out for the sign just a little bit more. Next is our 60 degree bit. Now this is a three fluted full carbide bit and this is probably our best cutting bit. This thing has a really good edge and it holds an edge really well. We use this for our inset letters from one to two inches. So from one inch, inch and a half and two inches, that's generally what we use. Now grandpa used to like to use the profile bit. That was his favorite way to do inset. We like the 60 degree because it cuts your time way down, but I will say it takes a little bit more practice because generally speaking, your depth is gonna be wider than your actual letters. So there's a little bit of guesswork you gotta get used to in there. 
Another way you can use it is if you're doing something and you have just a little bit of wood left over that you need to get a background on. Let's say the middle of a small O or something, and you have to be able to go carve that background in there, but the 90 degree might be just a little bit too wide. You might be taking a risk at hitting the sides of your carving. So you can use the 60 degree to go back in and do the background as well, but you're gonna need to make a little bit smaller circles because it doesn't cut as wide, so you might have some high spots. Again, that's no big deal. It just takes a little bit of practice to get used to. Quarter inch spiral upcut. Now the main purpose for this bit, as far as we're using, is actually to cut shapes with boards. If you have a pattern, you can actually cut all the way through a three quarter inch board, or if you have a thicker board, you can make multiple passes, and you can actually cut sign shapes with a quarter inch spiral upcut. The next use for the spiral upcut is if you want a flat background. Now, I'm more of a texture guy. I kind of like more of a rough texture in the background, but there's a lot of people that like a smooth background. So they would use the quarter inch spiral upcut if you've got a lot of space and you want to take a bunch of material out and you want a nice smooth background, that's where the quarter inch spiral really shines. One other way you can use it is if you are doing some power carving and you want to go really deep. Let's say you want to go a half inch deep or three quarters of an inch deep with power carving, you can take the bulk of that material out with the spiral upcut. Just go down a quarter of an inch or however deep you, that you want to, and then once that material is all gone, it leaves you a lot less that you have to do with the power carving. The quarter inch spiral is great for removing a lot of unwanted material. Just make sure you don't go more than a quarter of an inch per pass. Real quick guys, 2024 is the year that we are really trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. So if you could do us a favor, hit that little bell icon, hit that subscribe button. We've got a ton of cool stuff coming out. It would really help us out and it's free. Next up is our eighth inch spiral upcut bit. Now this is a quarter inch shank, just like almost all of our bits, but the cutting edge is actually only an eighth of an inch. As if you want a flat background in tight areas. The quarter inch spiral upcut does a great job removing a ton of wood and giving you that flat background, but it's pretty fat. So getting in between letters, getting in tight spaces is really difficult. So that's where the eighth inch spiral upcut comes in. And just like the quarter inch, you can use this at about 3 16 to a quarter of an inch at a time, but you don't want to go much past that per pass. So because it only has an eighth inch cutting diameter, which is pretty small, it's a little fragile, this is not one you would use to cut out any shapes. You want to use the quarter inch for that. And just like the quarter inch, this is one of the only bits that we cannot sharpen. So little side note here, guys. We sharpen all the bits. If you're a premium or executive member, we do it for free. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. So here's a brand new one that we just added a few months ago, and that's the 3 8 90. So the 3 8 90 primarily is used for background on big signs. Let's say you're carving some big outset letters and you've got a lot of material that you need to remove and you want a textured background. That's where this 3 8 90 really does a great job. It gives you a nice wide cut so that you're taking out a bunch of material at a time and it doesn't take you near as long as if you were just using the quarter inch 90. Another use for the 3 8 90 is big, huge inset letters. On big inset letters, you've got to remove a lot of material inside those lines so that 3 8 90 if you've got room, depending on the font, if you've got room, that's a great way to do the inside line on big inset letters. And then everything that's left in between, you can take out with a 3 8 90, or again, if you like the flat bottom, you can use a spiral upcut. Another way you can use it is to create a big fat line around letters that you've done and that you want to power carve, or if you just want a big fat line around a piece of artwork, not necessarily a cloud background, but a big fat heavy line to accentuate whatever it is that you're carving out set. Next is our carving liner. So the carving liner is a detail bit and a detail only bit. It's a single flute and it's got a really, really fine point on it. So this thing is great for like single line artwork, things like that. 
things where you really have to get a deep cut, but you can't be very wide. So this is what you would use as opposed to the profile for lines like that. So people ask all the time, especially new carvers, how do I get started? What bits do I need? I recommend the profile, the 60 and the 90 to get you started. You can do like 80% of all your carving with that. But the carving liner is what I recommend them to buy next because when it comes to fine detail, there is no better bit than this one. Even though it's only single flute, it cuts like a dream. Even through hardwoods like oak or maple, it really, really is a top-notch bit. The problem is you can't go any deeper than an eighth of an inch per pass. Because it's such a fine point bit, it is really fragile, so you wanna be careful not to go too deep in your first pass. Another way you can use this is for super tiny inset letters, say like half inch or below. It really works well for that, even though we don't do a whole lot of that, but there have been instances where there's been tiny inset letters in a piece of artwork or something that we wouldn't have been able to get without this bit. And something to keep in mind using the carving liner, only use it if you have to. Because it's single flute and it's a detail bit, it will dull faster, quite a bit faster than the profile bit. So if you have the option to use a profile bit, you definitely want to. This is a scalpel situation. Only use it when you absolutely have to. The 45 degree chamfer bit. Now this is the one, only bit that we have that's got a bearing on the bottom. So you really wanna pay attention to that. Make sure that that bearing number one stays loose. That's kind of a maintenance tip. Just throw a drop of oil in there maybe every four or five times you use it. The 45 degree chamfer bit really is made for doing bevels either on the back of your signs or a heavier bevel on the front. That's the way we use it. And you can use it for scalloping. A lot of people ask me how we do our scalloping on our boards. So the scalloping is just done with a certain technique. It's the same bit as the bevel. You just move it in and out in order to create a scallop, just one right after the other. The great thing about the scallop is you can do little scallops on small signs or even on big signs. I like bigger scallops. You can set it deep and you can have it big scallops on bigger signs. Big scallops to me it looks really good on western signs, ranch signs, horse stall signs, those kind of motifs. Even though I do a lot of scallops on just regular signage, it just gives kind of a unique look that you don't see a lot. And the last bit we have, which is one we only added like six or eight months ago, is our surfacing bit. This is the only bit we have that's a half inch shank. And this thing is pretty much exclusively used for surfacing big boards. We use it in our router sled a lot. So a couple things about this one. Number one, the manufacturer says that the RPM limit on this is 28,000. So this is the only bit that we recommend people drop their RPMs on their router. Another thing is you need to use a full size router. This thing takes out a lot of wood and it works great, but if you try to put it in a trim router, which I don't even think you can because that's only a quarter inch collet, but if you can, don't do it because this takes a lot of torque to turn and this thing is a monster. We got this a while back and once we use this one compared to our other surfacing bit, man, we chucked that other one. This bit is an absolute beast when it comes to surfacing. Again, it's kind of a specialized thing. We don't use it very much, but when we need it, we're really glad we have it. So there you go, guys. That's all of our bits, how we use them. Now, if you have a certain way that you use our bits that we haven't shown here, we'd love to hear your suggestions. So shoot us an email, eric at makeawoodsign.com or ryan at makeawoodsign.com. So don't forget, everything that we've used here today, everything that you've seen, there's links in the description below. So head on over to the website, check them out. If you have any questions, let us know. You know the email. We love you guys. We'll see you on the next one.